Hello and welcome to the Tillage Edge with me, Michael Hennessy. This is your regular update for all your tillage news and advice. Many farmers would have received a letter in the post from the Department of Agriculture in the last few days telling them they've been accepted into the Straw and Corporation Scheme. This year, there is more people accepted into the scheme than last year, with a total payment expected to exceed 12 million euros. Last year, quite a number of people who signed up for the scheme decided to exit before the harvest. This option is now closed, but if some unforeseen circumstances arise between now and harvest, a farmer can write to the department to seek an exemption. With the cost of inputs, farmers are calculating the value of straw and what it's worth to keep on their own farm. The value comes under a number of different ways, but primarily in P and K. Straw also provides value to the soil in terms of organic matter and carbon. However, straw which is chopped needs to be incorporated properly and some farmers have found this a little more difficult than expected. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Dermot Forrestal, a researcher in Oak Park in Chagas, and Mark Plunkett, a soil and plant nutritionist in Chagas, to discuss the topic. Mark, last year there was a reasonable uptake of the straw incorporation scheme. How did it work with farmers and did it work well on the ground afterwards? Yes, Michael, there was very good uptake in 2021. Uh, there was 10 million of a fund available and there was approximately eight, eight and a half million of that utilised in the straw chopping scheme. So there was good uptake in, in 2021. So farmers farmers uh, were happy enough with the word of mark? I, I think so, Michael. I think any farmers that have ailed of it, um, I think it's worked out pretty pretty okay. Um, 2021 was probably a good year overall in terms of straw. There was good straw volume out there. So yeah, I, I think anyone that chopped, I think was reasonably happy with the scheme in, in 2021. Okay. And for, for, for those who didn't, who just continued as they were doing it, bailing up the straw and, and, and selling it off the field or putting it into sheds, was there much of an overhang in straw, much left out, left over, I suppose, going into the spring? I suppose it's it's difficult to gauge, but yes, I I I I, I reckon uh, there is a portion of of last year's straw still in sheds, but I suppose it's very very hard to say exactly what's in sheds at present, Michael. Okay, so do you think those guys would be <laughs> disappointed, maybe, that they actually did do it, or, or rather go into the scheme, or do you think those guys have taken up maybe a bit more of the scheme? Well, 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 possibly maybe in 22, maybe um, those people that didn't maybe avail of the, the scheme in 21 will avail of the scheme in 2022. Okay, and any idea how that's after going in terms of the applications for 2022? Yeah, indications to date are quite good, Michael. Um, I think there's up to 52,000 hectares gone into the scheme. So, the, 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 you know, the figures are up on, on, on last year. So, um, yes, um, it, 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 it looks very promising for, for the current year. And will everybody who was in it, will they all be accepted in it, I suppose, will they? I believe they, they will, Michael. I think there is additional uh, f- uh, funds being made available so that everybody that, that is in the scheme will 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 avail of the 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 um, the money for, for chopping the straw in 2022. Okay. And it's obviously, the, the money's on one side of it, but um, retaining your straw on your ground, you do retain P and K and, you know, Certainly, has been a substantial increase in the price of that, the same as everything else uh, in 2022. But what sort of values should farmers put on to that P and K? Yes, certainly, Michael. Uh, with the way fertilizer prices have gone in the last, I suppose, eight to ten months, um, the cost of peas and Ks have have have, have doubled. So the, the value of the P and K in in straw has has doubled as well. So where you're chopping the straw, you're putting back. Um, you know, in terms of P, there's approximately 10% of the P remains in the straw and approximately 90%, sorry, approximately 50% of the K remains in the straw. So in terms of potash, like there's, there's quite a, a nice saving there in that by chopping the straw, you can supply approximately 50% of the, the crops um, P, uh, sorry, or of the crops K requirement and also a little bit of P uh, coming there as well from the chopped straw. So from the figures that, 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 that you would see on the P's and K's, um, the, the next crop, if you like, do, doesn't have access to the full amount. Is that what you're saying? They only have access to a little over 10% of it in, in, in P and, and only half of it in, in, in K. Is that, is that it? In terms of phosphorus, there's approximately 10% of the P remains in the straw. The other 90% is taken out in the grain at harvest time. So if you take a crop of winter wheat, say a 10 ton crop is taken off approximately 40 kilograms of P per hectare. So there'll be four kilograms of P then would remain. It's quite a small amount and um, that would remain there 
um, and would be available to the, the following crop or would reduce the following crops uh, P requirement. In terms of potash, there's a bigger proportion, there's approximately 50%. So again, if we take our example, a crop of winter wheat um, at 10 tonnes to the hectare, there's approximately 50 kilos of K being returned in the straw. So quite a significant um, you know, amount of K coming back and can re quite significantly reduce the crop's K requirement in the, the year ahead. So if we take, say, take a crop of winter wheat or a crop of winter barley or a crop of spring barley, and if we put, put a value in terms of a monetary value on the P and K that's returned in the, in the chop straw, it's worth approximately 100 to 115 euros per hectare. And on the other hand, then, oat and straw, there's actually more. There's about 60, 70% of the K actually returned in the straw, and it's worth approximately 165 euros per hectare. So in the current year with indications that fertilizer will, you know, remain expensive um, in, in the year ahead. You know, where straw is chopped, it can quite significantly, um, I suppose, reduce the cost of, of P, um, especially K in, in, the, in the year ahead. So in the example you gave there of four kgs of P and 50 kgs of K, is that equivalent to that amount out of a bag? In other words, is, is that all available to the plant for the next year, if like for the next crop that's going to be going to be planted, it it would be Michael. I suppose firstly to say it, I suppose it's a small amount. It's only only ten percent of the overall crop's requirement. But yes, once that straw is incorporated and worked into the soil, it'll start to break down and it will become available in the in twenty twenty three. Let's say. Okay. Okay. And it, it's obviously available in a, in a, in a I don't know. A, you hear lots of talk about a bioavailable kind of form, if you like. But in terms of the other bits and pieces that's in straw, it, it, is there any nitrogen available or what's the, the, the story as regards adding to the carbon or adding to the, to the organic matter in the, in the soils? Is, that, is it helpful or do we have a value on that? Yeah, and in terms of the carbon, um, I suppose, look, there, there is little opportunity, especially where you can't, I suppose, source organic manures to get organic matter or carbon back into the soil. So again, if you take our, our example, a 10 ton crop of winter wheat, we're returning approximately 2.4 tons per hectare of, of carbon. Um, and the soil will retain somewhere in the region of 15 to 20% of that, that carbon goes into the, I suppose, the soil carbon pool or the organic matter pool in the soil. But building that carbon is a very, very slow process. Again, work that Dermot would have carried out there in Knockbeg and Oak Park over, I think, eight years, Dermot, you were showing a, an increase of 0.015% in the percentage carbon per year. But I suppose the other side of the story is, is that, Michael, we're also feeding the biology, we're feeding the bacteria, we're also improving things like soil structure, soil health, soil quality. Um, and also we don't have to take off that straw come harvest time as well. So there's less, I suppose, risk, there's less traffic, less risk of compaction around that, that time, you know what I mean? That you have less machinery, less operations in the field. So there, there's many benefits in terms of chopping straw or getting you know, straw back into the soil. But I think Dermot probably will talk later in the interview, but incorporating that straw rapidly is very, very important. And to get it into the soil, to get it breaking down, to get that release of the, the nutrients from that straw and the value out of it in the following year. Okay, yes, yeah, it's, it's a great point to bring, to, 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 to bring Dermot in on here, Dermot. And Mark mentioned there a second ago about uh, feeding the soil, but I think some growers might argue that it's feeding more than just the soil, it's feeding some pests as well, the likes of slugs and that. In terms of your straw um, distribution, I suppose, in the field or, or, or even uh, the, the, the length of the chop, does that make any difference in terms of slugs or is, is that a totally different point? Yeah, well, first of all, I think distribution is hugely important. Um, well, you spoke about chop length. I think, well, most of the combine choppers, they're all set roughly to give you about the same let length in terms of the, the knives that are in the chopper and that the mean length might be something uh, between 20 and 30 millimeters. There are some variations and some uh, different possibilities in terms of knife incorporation on some choppers, but most are similar. But the, the distribution is hugely important because I think in Irish crops generally have big straw yields. OK, they have very big straw yields. And often the straw isn't fully ripe when it's going through the combine relative to other climates. It's, it's, and uh, of course, we can have damp days as well. So the challenge is often in 
chopping it, but particularly in spreading the straw and getting it back out to the full width from which that straw was cut. And I think many of the problems that people had last year and uh, Mark has seen some of this. I remember him showing me some photographs and I've seen it myself, where, where the, the straw being spread from the combine wasn't actually making the full width of the header. So you had a big combine, big header, but the straw chopper either through setting or simply not having enough capacity wasn't actually spreading that straw out evenly uh, across the full width afterwards. So if anybody has a choice when they're buying combines, look carefully at the chopper options that are there because some of them have different spreading options that are more suitable to wide headers. And particularly in our conditions, you'd want to be picking probably the widest spread capacity available for your combine. Okay, so that, that, that'll help with the, with the slug issues maybe afterwards. And incorporation is going to be a big part of that. And there's many different tools which a farmer can use. Is there, is there any best one? Is a tine better than a, than a disc? Is a, a big tine versus a small tine? What's the, what's the thinking in terms of um, how that incorporation happens best? Yeah, like there's there's many, Michael, there's many different kind of levels of incorporation and there's pros and cons and going for how deep you go and various things like that. But in answer to your first question, I would think both tines and discs that are designed for the job can do the job. Both of them can do it. And indeed, some of the machines have combinations of tines and discs. I think what you need to have is something that, that is designed to work in trashy conditions. So you need a frame, if you like, uh, whether it's a disc or a tine machine, you need a frame with lots of clearance there. And you need discs that are mounted in such a way that it doesn't get balled up, if you like, with straw in front of it. So certainly the design for stubble uh, cultivation and stubble incorporation, it's important to have that right. Both tines and discs can incorporate. They can incorporate to different depths. Um, the, uh, the disc is possibly a little bit more limited on that unless you're working with a very, very heavy disc, uh, because in dry conditions, some of this shallow stubble cultivation discs won't penetrate very deeply, but they will still get that straw in contact with soil, which is what will start the breakdown process. So really, what's really important there is to get it spread evenly first and then to start the process by incorporation. Indeed, if you're looking to get uh, a stale seabed to try and control grass weeds, and depending on what you're going to cultivate with later, maybe the first cultivation being shallow, you know, might be an advantage there because you're not going to bury your, your weed seeds too deep. But in some cases, people might want to go a little bit deeper than that in the beginning, depending on straw, depending on straw volume. Whereas in other situations, you may go shallow first, but then you may have a deeper cultivation later on. But it is important to start the process reasonably early to get uh, the straw in contact with some of the soil to start the degradation process. So, Dermot, in, in terms of the, the depth of that cultivation um, that, that, that you men mentioned, what's the justification for going deep at all? I mean, you mentioned that trying to keep it shallow, you might get more weed seeds to grow. Why would somebody consider going down to deep? And you might maybe give a comment of what you regard as shallow and what you regard as deep in terms of centimeters or inches. Yeah, I think in, in terms of shallow, you're probably talking about something that's maybe 50 millimeter or two inches or so and deep is, you know, from that 50 down to maybe 150 or 100, 150 millimeters deep, which would be six inches deep or something like that. The reasons for different depth, I suppose it depends on what you're going to do afterwards. Um, like you could, with, with big straw volumes, big oat crops, for instance, if you try and incorporate in a very shallow depth at 50 millimeters and then sow directly into that, you might not be sowing in the best conditions. You could have a very loose and open and uh, difficult to get good seed to soil contact afterwards if there's a lot of straw in that hasn't broken down in that top two inches or 50 millimeters. So that might make the case for a deeper mixing of the soil. I think that the, the, the two inches or 50 mil will start the degradation process, but you could still have that very loose uh, soil straw um, mix at the top where you find it very hard to compact the soil enough. It'll be spongy with straw on that part to give you the good seed to soil contact. And many people last year would have seen even, even um, their cover crops, uh, they'd have seen cover crops that might have been quite patchy uh, if there was a huge volume of straw or straw that wasn't spread well. But it also uh, followed through into, into winter crops that were sown where the straw wasn't properly incorporated. So I, I think you can incorporate fairly shallow, but depending on the volumes, there may be uh, some benefit in distributing it into a greater depth in some cases to ensure that you're following 
winter cereal crop, if that's what you're growing, will have good to seed, seed to soil contact. Um, but it depends on what you're going to do afterwards. Some people will be ploughing after, so they're going to then mix the, the 50 millimetre, you know, that top 50 millimetre mix will then be redistributed down to through a profile of 200 millimetres afterwards. So it really depends on what you're going to do afterwards. Okay, so from from... From what you're saying there, um, if you want to go deep, the, probably the chances are it's going to have to be a timed implement for the most part, if that's what you need to do. Um, and, and I was kind of thinking here of some of the, uh, I suppose the crop that's become quite popular or more popular now is rye, which produces a huge amount of straw. I, is it possible to incorporate something with straw that's, you know, that volume of straw coming out? I think it is. I think it may take a couple of goes to do that. Um, do you know what I mean? That it may, it may be relatively shallow at the beginning and then maybe something else that goes a little bit deeper than that because it will have big volumes. But I mean, we're not talking about double the volume, say, of a big oat crop or something like that. So many people would have incorporated straw from a big winter wheat crop or a fairly big or slightly bigger oat crop, you know, without going to huge depth. So the rye, maybe you need that extra bit of depth afterwards to have it. But as I say, um, you know, where the rye would be challenging too is in getting that even distribution from a chopper. So I think that's vital and that's the first start. And then, you know, I think you're going to have to look at the job that you're doing with that first pass of a cultivator. As I say, many people don't want to go too deep with that if they're at stale seabeds and they may then do something different. Well, they might be ploughing anyhow, but if they're not ploughing, they may be coming with something deeper that will redistribute over a wider profile. But what you're trying to do is avoid having it too loose in that area um uh, you know where the seed is where the seed of your eventual crop is going to be if it's a winter crop you're sowing you want to be able to have compact soil around that to get good seed to soil contact and indeed you know you don't want to you mentioned at the beginning there michael problems with slugs you know again you want good consolidation with that and maybe a good bit of distribution as well but the slug the slug issue is not clear cut i mean Generally, I think if you have more material like straw on the seabed, you are going to get from a positive side more earthworms. You'll also tend to get more slugs generally, but it's not universal. I know in Tom Kennedy's work here in Knock Beg uh, on the heavier soil uh, over nine years on average, where we incorporated straw, um, he didn't get an increase really in slug numbers. He got an increase in earthworm numbers, but he didn't in slug norms from the straw incorporation. He did from the tillage treatments, but not from the strong corporation. So it's not universal that slug numbers will increase, but generally other work would have shown increases in slug numbers with strong corporation. Can I ask you then, is, is, is time of the essence then in terms of once you, um, you'd often hear a guy saying, I, I'm following the combine, I'm, I'm getting in so fast. Is it, is it that crucial or is, is it a bit more nuanced than that? I think if you're going to chop it, I would try and get the de degradation starting quite quickly. Like, remember, there are people who are practicing no-till who won't, you know, they'll return the straw, I suppose, without any cultivation. But once you start, once you start cultivation and you, you get it and you're trying to break it down quickly uh, because it's now going to be within the seedbed rather than a mulch sitting on top of it. Once you start that process, I think I would like to start it fairly quickly. And uh, unless there's good reason not to, which may be, you know, following a crop of oilseed rape, you might not want to disturb it at all for a while to get your first chit of seed without any uh, cultivation. But I do think I'd like to get it, uh, the, the, the seed to soil contact there. Um, the, the, the straw is abraded by the combine and by the chopper. So there are plenty of sites for the fungi and bacteria that are in the soil to start working. So I don't think there's a disadvantage in going early. I think I think that there's a benefit in going early to start the degradation early. early. But look, farmers are going to be extremely busy around that time, so it, it's hard to do it. But uh, I would start early. A final question, Dermot, just as regards um, the, the, the straw incorporation. Then um, uh, again, there is there's there, there, there's talk, I suppose, maybe more so than anything else, uh, of, of applying nitrogen to some of these soils that haven't had um, much strong cooperation over the years to help speed up or start that process of breakdown. Is, is there anything in that? Um, look, there, there, there's logic in it, but I think the answer really is that it probably doesn't pay uh, to do it and it's not necessarily what you want to do. So the logic is there is sound in that you have a lot of, you know, there's a, 
straw is a very high carbon to nitrogen ratio. There's a lot of carbon there to break down. There's very little nitrogen in the straw. Most of it has gone in the grain. So uh, for the microbes and that to, to, to break down the straw, they need a nitrogen source and they take that from the soil. So they do lock up nitrogen for a period while they're breaking down that straw. But I think there's quite a bit of work, uh, you know, was done in the UK, which on balance said that there isn't really justification for adding nitrogen uh, at that phase, you know, that it doesn't make a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, they'd spin it the other way and would say that it probably prevents nitrogen leaching. So, you know, it's not going to adversely affect establishment. The establishment may be affected by straw chopping in other ways, uh, whether it's slugs, whether it's not a good seed bed because there's too much straw near the seed or whatever. But in terms of nitrogen, loss it shouldn't really adversely affect that but it does actually lock up a certain amount but that shouldn't have a negative impact on it so i don't think applying nitrogen should really be necessary in that situation that's not the way to go brilliant no, that's great thanks very much dermot and mark for for joining me today that's a it's a good roundup of uh, i suppose the bits and pieces to look out for in terms of straw incorporation including the value uh, values of that, that to, to the farmer i suppose and if you're going to bail it, what you're giving away uh, in that sense or what you should get be getting paid for. So guys, thanks again for your time and we'll, we'll chat again later on in the year. Thank you. So that's all we've time for. And my thanks to Mark and Dermot for joining me on the podcast today. Finally, don't forget if you enjoyed the podcast and recommend it to a friend or colleague. And as always, rate, review and follow on Apple Podcast or Spotify so you never miss an episode. And for more information, go to chagas.ie. I'm Michael Hennessy. Thanks for listening. I'll be back next week with more tillage news and advice.